Great, thank you. Uh, I'm really excited to be here today with, to share with you the kind of research our group has been doing with Julia with network uh, algorithms at Purdue. Uh, our group is read by, uh, led by Professor David Gleick here, he is in the picture. Uh, throughout this presentation there will be some code online if you'd like to follow along, uh, please feel free. So. Uh, Easy way to do it, go to my handle, Nassar Huda on GitHub, and you'll find the repo. Okay, so just to set the stage first, this is one uh, network over here. Any Game of Thrones fans in the audience? No? Wow, okay, great. So this is the Game of Thrones network that was assembled by one uh, professor at McAllister University in uh, college in London. And the way he assembled the network, the reason he assembled the network, he wanted to know who is the most important character in that show. They wanted to know who's gonna be the king, basically. And what he did was created this network and then ran just classic page rank on this network. And he found who was the most important character. Now, Finding the most important node in a certain network is important and it, it has many applications, but there are so many other applications in networks. Uh, things like um, node finding communities, uh, so given a certain node, so if I have a node over here, can I know which community does that node belong to? That's very important in bi biological applications, for example. There are things like label inference. If I have a subset of nodes and I know certain labels of these subsets, can I know the uh, labels of the other subsets that are not labeled in the network? and this is called label, label inference. There are many, many, many things that you can do. Uh, also, uh, network alignment, and I'll touch on network alignment towards the end of this presentation. Okay, so these were the visual graph nice things that we look at the graph and we would want to do things uh, basically from nodes and edges perspective. But there's a really huge class of these applications or these ideas that are essentially just linear algebra ideas. They are nothing but matrix and matrices and vectors. So for example, I picked a couple of them, the most famous, I guess, the most famous one is PageRank, which is here really just a linear system. There's network alignment. There's this one algorithm called ISORank. Um, it's really also a linear system. Heat kernel is an exponential of a matrix. Uh, random walks are a repeated, a repeated matrix vector products. And, uh, spectral clustering is nothing but finding eigen, uh, an eigenvec eigenvectors for this Laplace and weighted Laplace matrix. Great, so if we have a graph and we have a way to find a cluster on it, then great, then I have Julia, I can just go type in the equations and get whatever I want. But the problem with that is these equations or, or equations of this form that translate the exact theory do not really make a lot of sense when the networks are huge. And by huge, I mean more than a million nodes and, and in the order of, billion, of billions of edges. And these are the networks we work with. So the, the, the goal of our research group is really to take, to take these ideas and think of ways to make them faster. And just to give you an insight of what I mean by making them faster, if you try to apply um, heat kernel communities to find uh, communities on a network, the naive implementation based the pre on the previous equation is nothing, is, is, it requires an order of n cube uh, uh, theoretical runtime. Um, if you do know some sparse iterative uh, tricks, you can take that down into the order of um, edges of the graph, which are the number of non-zeros. Uh, the work my advisor and one of our colleagues did was actually bring that down to even a constant time that is really just dependent on the accuracy of the solution. So this is just a taste of the kind of things we do. Now, this is the theoretical aspect. We also need to write code for that. What did we do in the previous years? I'm not gonna spend more than five seconds on this slide. MATLAB and Max just drove us crazy. It was good for maybe a couple of years or a few years, but uh, it was just a wasted, a wasting time and, and it was lots of bugs and lots of uh, crazy other things. So and then this happened. I know the font doesn't appear here, but I think this, is the, this was the fastest yes that I've ever said in my life. Uh, so my advisor emails me and say, hey, okay, let's meet on Friday at 12.30 and do you know this programming language? Can you try to download it and, uh, and use it by Friday and port this MATLAB code to this Julia code? So he sent this at 9.08 p.m., so it's on Wednesday evening, and I replied at 9.11 p.m., so it took me 
three minutes to go to Julia's website and decide, okay, yeah, I can do this in one day. That was really the fastest yes that I've ever said in my life. So I said, yeah, sure. And that was my first uh, Julia uh, uh, code. And then I became just a Julia, uh, Julia, Julia nerd, basically. I just wanted to keep, fed, uh, to keep being uh, fed Julia. I was the Julia guinea pig of the group. Um, and I wanted to do everything with Julia. So what was the email about? This is, on the left, is the theoretical part of it. I'm not going to go into the details and bore you with some uh, mathematical ideas, but the real task that I needed to do is to validate uh, one hypothesis we had, and the hypothesis wa was, does seeded page rank on graphs remain local on these graphs? So if I run page rank on this uh, graph, on, on this one of these nodes, does, uh, does the random walk exploit the entire graph, or does it remain local in one area. So the real bottleneck was coming up with a way to compute or to generate these large graphs. We wanted to generate a graph in the order of billions of edges. Uh, the biggest graph we generate was billion nodes with billions of edges. Uh, there were smaller ones with uh, less than a billion nodes but billions of edges. So here's what happened. So we, we tried to uh, use uh, C, uh, my advisor tried to use his C code that he had already written and just uh, generate the code, uh, generate the graph, write it to disk, and then read it from disk. So there was a major read-write <coughs> overhead from disk. So that was not a very good uh, approach. We started with MATLAB, we ported, ported that to Julia. That was super easy. That was the first thing I did with Julia. Uh, but still, reading and writing from I.O. was really uh, hard. Um, afterwards, we, uh, my favorite, one of my favorite things about Julia was that I was able to write this wrapper function to this uh, C code. We wrote this wrapper, and that way we avoided the overhead of reading and writing from disk. And we were able to generate a one billion node graph in a matter of two to three hours. So that was done. Uh, just some context here. This was happening sometime in 2015. Uh, somewhere between 0.3 and 0.4, there were things with the plotting schemes. They, were, they are much better now. So that's great, thanks to plots.jl. Uh, there were other things with, with sparse linear algebra and Julia, like for example, this function we never, like we really just discovered it a couple of months ago. We really wanted this function to be there when we were working on this, so we had to re-implement it ourselves. And uh, when you're talking about, um, when you're talking about uh, A transpose times X and A is or, uh, in the order of billions, there are billions of uh, non-zeros in it, um, you really don't want to transpose the matrix when you want to do A transpose X. Uh, first project was a success. We wanted to do more graph stuff on Julia. Um, this is matrix networks. I'm not gonna, uh, matrix networks is really twofold. I'm not gonna go into the details of the functionalities, but really what the whole, the whole philosophy over there is that we can think of a network as a matrix and a matrix as a network. Uh, we do take care of the common uh, pr primitives. For example, uh, whatever we use for our research, BFS, uh, DFS connected components, these are the basics. And we do take care of all the uh, research, uh, research code. We just make sure that they're mature enough. And then once they are production ready, we take any algorithm we came up with and just uh, add it to uh, matrix networks. Uh, these are the things we have. This is, for example, the BFS illustration between two nodes on the Game of Thrones network. And um, uh, we've, we've got connected components, paths, diffusions, uh, spectral clustering, and now I'm working on uh, network alignment. Um, just, uh, I'd like to spend uh, some time on network alignment, but uh, I'll be brief. <laughs> Uh, so network alignment is really the problem of given a network A, in this case green, and a network B, in, the, in this case red, and given some, a bunch of, of similarities between these nodes, we know that these nodes are similar, so essentially I want to bring these networks to, to each other in, in a, as close as possible. Ideally, in the ideal case scenario, I would want to make them uh, as close to isomorphic as possible. Uh, but this is an, an, uh, an optimization problem that is NP-hard. So we do come up with other sorts of uh, ways to do this. So there's, there's one approach that we're doing, and it really boils down to, at some point, there's this huge matrix that each row, we want to solve a bipartite matching problem on each row of, uh, of, of the matrix. And um, so far, we've been, this has happened, and the previous experience was writing this in max, and the max code was pretty good. It was really fast, and it was doing the job. Now, we have switched to Julia, but the problem is 
we still, our performance in Julia is not that good. And I'm pretty sure there's, there's a type instability buried somewhere in the code. I've spent a couple of hours debugging it, but I still can't seem to find it. And, uh, but there's this type instability thing, that, which is, I guess, my biggest nightmare in, uh, when writing Julia code that I want to be fast. Uh, so here are the things that I wish are better about Julia. Or I, I know these are, these are things that have been mentioned in the conference. Um, in different formats. So uh, things like, I don't know if there's, I know there are so many things, so many ways to do analysis, but when there's code instability, I wish the compiler can tell us where the code instability uh, exists because that can make our codes much faster. Um, hoping for better error in uh, reporting and even faster plotting. So, so far we can plot a one million a node graph. It requires some insight, but even the one million node graph with the same exact code on iJulia just crashes Julia and doesn't work. So uh, there's, there's some, some, um, some work probably to be done here. Um, to end with the awesome things, we love the Julia community. I think we're starting to convince more people in our university and our department to uh, be using Julia. We, I do think that I never asked a question at Julia and uh, not get an answer. So I've always had someone help me and it was awesome. The community is really great. Uh, there's the performance, uh, the performance is Julia and Julia is definitely the biggest gain. And my favorite is reproducibility because reproducing code is, research code especially is so crucial, I think. Um, and these are some uh, n uh, links to the, the package matrix networks and uh, the presentation files. Thank you. So you mentioned you know, representing networks as matrices. Now, do you support other representations, or is that you said you know, this is one way to do it? No, honestly, really the real idea is that, so for example, you can um, do certain algorithms. For example, I'll take BFS for now. So you can do BFS in, in a nonlinear algebra mentality, but you can also do BFS in a linear algebra mentality. So the whole philosophy is, let's try to make these matrices and vectors and just do things in, in a linear algebra mentality. Now, when you say matrix, are you, matrix, are you talking about just a regular dense array? No, 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 sparse. sparse. No, yeah, of course, yeah. You had a question? Yeah, I'm just curious, uh, what is your outlook on the uh, current state of graph visualization? You, you mentioned, like, what, what, if, what are you using <laughs> for those for small Oh, these are our codes. So these are uh, PyPlot, basically. Uh -huh. Plots with PyPlot being a backend. These are, the codes are online if any of the visualization guys are, we are just right, plotting lines and dots. And the one million graph is really just a plots with a PyPlot backend. Yeah, I can. GL visualize. Um, to be very honest, I haven't tried, but uh, I would be happy to give it a try. Visualizing graphs is always a big, uh, yeah. All right, uh, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.